Hello and welcome to the VCSP how-to videos. I'm Adrian Lowe, Cloud System Engineer, and I'll be covering off the Veeam Search Provider Console, Dashboard and Reports. So, what are the dashboards and why are they important? So essentially, the dashboards themselves will give you information and insights into the companies that you're protecting, as well as the service provider infrastructure providing those services. These dashboards can give you a global view of the environment or it can be laser focused to a given company or reseller. So what dashboards do you provide? We have the job overview dashboard. This will show you a ratio of successful jobs and the jobs that are finished with, with warnings and errors for each specific day. If it's green, so like the traffic light system, as you can see clearly, if it's green, then happy days. If it's amber or red, then you need to go and see and, and examine the issue. Um, to see this, you can drill down a little bit deeper into the job details and you can get a bit more of a, a verbose understanding. Again, you've got the client infrastructure dashboard. This provides a summary and the health status of the consumed resources and data protection operations for a company's given backup infrastructure. This includes the latest alarms, backup infrastructure, the repositories, the protected computers, virtual machine and file shares, as well as a top VM jobs by duration and hardware planned usage. And finally, you have the Cloud Connect infrastructure uh, dashboard. This is a dashboard that provides a service provider a summary of their own estate. This shows them the latest alarms and also the status update of their components in their infrastructure as well, whether it's the backup server itself, the proxies, repositories, or the WAN accelerators. Again, functioning on a traffic light system, there's the green, yellow, and red for, you know, green would be for an example of a machine is connected and available for data protection operations. A yellow could mean a Veeam backup software component, such as an in installer or transport, uh, or so on is out of date and red could mean that there's a connection that is lost and the machine is now unavailable for data protection which just gives you the administrator the ability to sort of identify trouble uh, troubleshooting fairly swiftly you can also see the hardware planned usage in here as well for your sort of ongoing c consumption um, requirements to access these dashboards again you will need some access permissions and to do no, sorry to perform various configurations and settings within each of these dashboards the required privileges are a portal administrator a site administrator or a portal operator however uh, if you just want to do the job overview and the client infrastructure dashboard overview then you can use a read-only user next i'll discuss the reports So for reports, we can customize, configure and view. And the key reports will be for protected computers. So that's your physical agents, protected virtual machines for your customers' environments and the file shares as well. This is the native NAS backups. We have extended report reach now. So if you have workloads in Azure or AWS and you have VBR on a tenant site, with the plugin into the public cloud, then we can also feed those details back into the Search Provider Console. We also have the historical license and reporting. So the usage reported generated for previous months can now be visible from the console itself. However, getting started. So how can we get this all off the ground and what can we do to see these reports? Well, you can customize the backup reports with your own logos, configure the report notifications to see who gets what. The reports themselves will be PDFs and sent out with email notifications. If you do not schedule the backup reports, then you will need to generate them manually as an FYI. So with no further ado, let's take you over to a demo. So if you launch your Veeam Search Provider console portal, type in the relevant login credentials, will be greeted with the landing page. So once you're logged in, you'll see the overview dashboard here. So you've got the client alarms, monthly revenue, protected VMs, and so on. However, we're gonna be focusing on the dashboards element. 
where you will see the job overview discussed previously, the client, over, uh, client infrastructure, which we're going to detail on a little bit later on, and the Cloud Connect infrastructure. Again, for this job overview, you can select the various periods. So that can be the last 30 days or the previous month or the current month. I'll stick to the last 30 days. Uh, and you'll also see this traffic light system, which is green, amber, red. And you can see at the bottom here, green would indicate success. Amber would indicate there's a warning and red would indicate there's a failed job. So if we select this one, we'll be able to see a little bit more in depth whereby you can search by the different job name. You can look through the, the long list of, of various jobs for success and fails, or you can search via job name. So for example, NAS backup to XFS, and you will see all the relevant jobs with that given name. Or you can filter by status. So whether you want to select all, whether you want to see all the successful jobs, or any with a current warning and minus the successful jobs, or whether you see any that's failed and focusing on those. Select all again. You can filter via workload, so selecting all or via virtual machines or physical computers or the file shares as well. Uh, and again, recently we've added in the virtual machine for cloud VMs where it ex extends to the public cloud. You can also see the transactional uh, database logs as well. But we don't have any in this example. So, there, there you go, you can see the detailed breakdown of the ver uh, various job statuses. And just to add to that, you can also export this into a CSV or XML file. So if I just do that as an example, you'll see the file here and we'll open that up in Notepad and you'll see the various jobs. Obviously you'd ideally do this in Excel, you see it a bit, bit of a better logical view. Going over to the client infrastructure, you'll see the latest alarms uh, with the relevant uh, traffic light system again, where there's errors, warnings, uh, and so on. Mentioned previously where you can filter in, uh, you can do the laser, laser focus, where you can just specify a given reseller and see their infrastructure, what that consists of, i.e. whether it's just a backup repository, the Cloud Connect server, uh, and so on. The relevant protected workloads, whether that's the physical, virtual machines or file shares and so on. There's not much data in this one. So I'll just put it back on all and you'll see a verbose breakdown here where it's a little bit more interesting. You'll see the health status there. So backup infrastructure components, so the backup server, there's two and there's an error as well on this one, for example, you've got a backup proxy and the backup repositories. The list of various different cloud collect uh, repositories as well uh, for the various different companies and then you've also got the protected workloads, whether that's physical, virtual machine, file shares, um, and also by top job, uh, top VM jobs by duration. And finally, then you've got the Cloud Connect uh, replication as well with the hardware planned usage, which will outline the various CPU, memory, and storage consumed. Finally, you've then got the Cloud Connect infrastructure. So this is the service providers infrastructure hosting the services. Again, very similar to the previous one with the latest uh, details and status updates, whether it's an error or warning or, and so on. You've then got the Cloud Connect infrastructure components themselves. So the Cloud Connect server, which is one here. You've got an enterprise manager in this instance, two Connect, uh, Cloud Connect gateways as well for resiliency. Um, and then you've got backup proxy and so on. Again, you've got a breakdown of various repositories associated to this service provider uh, infrastructure. And again, you've got the hardware planned usage uh, that's currently active as well. Um, so that's a summary of the dashboards. Also, if you wanted to edit the relevant sort of roles and permissions, you go to the top right up here, configurations, roles, and then you can click new or edit. In this area, we can then select the relevant sort of users uh, by company and al allocate the relevant user role. So whether it's a read only for just dashboard views, uh, as mentioned earlier, for job overviews and client infrastructure um, or portal operators or portal administrators. In this instance, I'm not gonna commit anything just now, but it's just a way to show you how to delegate the relevant roles and responsibility. Next, we're gonna focus on the reports. 
here you'll see a list of all the reports uh, which exist today you can search by report name so whether that's AILO Asian backups you can see here or just see the full verbose or again you can filter via f uh, physical sorry physical uh, agent backup reports virtual machine backup reports or file shares if you want to go and create go to configurations and this is where you can edit existing reports and rerun them uh, rerun the backup job reports again uh, or create a net new one in this example I'll create a net new one again when you create a net new one you've got the choice to create a report against protected physical agents here as you can see or protected virtual machines or file shares in the example here I'm just going to go for a protected uh, physical computers click next and give it a new name of ALO Asian backups new next select the relevant um, select the relevant company you want to run the report against or you can do multiple companies in one sitting select the location of the given report and then select the relevant parameters in this instance I'm going to leave it at the default which is RPO one day this can be down to hours uh, or up to weeks or months again operations mode so you can select this for the server or workstation for a physical agent I'll leave it to all and again for the management mode as well you can select whether it's all or by the console or backup server can add some exclusions in as well or you know the group by whether it's the agents or the backup policy i select backup policy in this instance and then you've also got a choice of which agents you want to include within the report whether it's the windows linux or mac os you can then set the schedule if you desire uh, in this instance i'm just going to run it manually so i'm not setting the schedule and then you get a summary of the backup report now if you search down here where I created it you've got the new backup report I'm now going to run that report the report will be run you'll be able to click all reports here and then get a view of the given report you'll see the report pop up in the top right hand corner for download which is a PDF file open that report and you'll get a summary of the report overview the location for the given report parameters put in earlier and the RPO specified in the summary again you will get a breakdown of the managed computers and again the protected computers so you might have multiple computers within your environment which appear to be unprotected and this is one way of identifying those computers as well you can get a breakdown so this is just a an agent backup report but you can also do the same for virtual machines and the physical cloud services as well With that given report then, you can then either have the choice to just view it, send it or delete it. So if you were to send in this instance, we don't have an SMTP server, but this will give you the ability to send that to the given customer uh, or company. Again, if you wanted to configure or edit those policies or jobs, you can come in here, click edit and make the relevant changes that you see fit. So newer, I want to include some additional companies or parameters or change the relevant parameters you previously set whether it's down to um, hours or so on but you might see a different output from the reports one other thing is you might want to customize the reports that you've seen and therefore the report here by default as we opened up earlier will show you Veeam in the top right hand corner if you want to do that go to configurations set the notification of your SMTP go to your company info and then you set the portal brand in here and you can change the reports you can do this on a reseller basis as well for given companies as well uh, in this instance i'm just doing it at the parent service provider and that is pretty much uh, a bit of a 101 over the relevant reports if you have any more questions or queries please feel free to reach out to your representative and we can help you furthermore thank you